So on the order of gathering recycled components for use in experiments and whatnot, we all know that you can desolder with a single soldering iron and a various number of tools. However, I have two techniques of gathering components at a higher rate so that you can rapidly turn something like this into something like this. And as you can see, there's a large amount of parts over in the corner here. They're already half stripped aboard using these two techniques, which are as follows. So for the first technique, we're going to need a string of solder. And not just one, but two soldering irons. You work them simultaneously, you can desolder some of the most stubborn components. These have a very large thermal mass, so they take a while. And with a single soldering iron, this would be a hopeless endeavor. But as you heard, you can uh, just, they just drop out. There is a bit of preparation involved, like you have to remove the mounting screw for the transistors and such. But, you have to do far less work in a gong one, like you don't need to desolder each pin individually, desoldering irons, a specific one with the pump in it and everything, they're pretty expensive and not very good for uh, plated through holes on boards like this. I've uh, had many a frustrating day trying to get parts off these kind of boards and the hole never quite clears. Give the irons time to heat up between runs of uh, maybe two components or three, depending on your thermal mass. Twin irons can help you out massively when dealing with uh, power transistors, they can just drop off the board. Surface mount components are a completely different ball game, but with surface mount boards, this technique works a lot easier. If I go on either side of the component running up and down, you can get a surface mount chips off the board. Yes, you do kind of have to fling them off the iron as they will stick, but for the most part you can get them off pretty easy. And it happens pretty quickly. They just come off straight away. And uh, helps if you have a surface or some tool to wipe them off on when they stick to the iron like that. So I'll get another one. Oh, it just comes straight off as I hit a pin on the board. So yes, they do kind of just fall off sometimes and you can take them straight away. You do also have to uh, come in at an angle a lot of the time because of the uh, other parts in the way. But if you've got one stuck to it, you can always just wipe it off on a pair of pliers like that. And this way you can gather, especially with a linear array, you can gather them pretty quickly. But yes, for all the other packages, such as this uh, transistor -y thing here, you can run it up and down the pins and it just comes off. Everything's super quick, super easy. Resistor. So power resistor there. So that's actually kind of worth gathering. But there you go. Using two irons, you can get a surface mount parts easier than you can get through hole parts. And there you go, two at a time. With heavy mass boards like this, it can take some time. But that's when you get out the heat gun after all else fails. Because you would much prefer to uh, not blast the components with uh, hundreds of degrees for a long time because you can't regulate the temperature with the next technique. You're kind of just going gung ho on these things and uh, brute forcing them off the board. But you get a massive hole out of it and parts literally rain off the board. So, as regards to my quick demo, there's a uh, whole bunch of MOSFETs here now. Seven of those, two of those. And that's just a couple of minutes of use from these. But the next technique, using a heat gun, it gets you a lot more at once. Trying to get these capacitors right here.
one of the most important aspects of uh, component recovery is the testing process. So, well, this is a basic test, so testing the parts is uh, limited in its functionality, but it does the job. It will tell you some basic characteristics. It's not exactly the best in the world. Uh, you want to use it to test pretty much every part that you recover because you don't know if one of the parts that you have picked off the board it may not be damaged or evidently fried on the outside but it could have been the part involved in the failure that in this thing being thrown out whatever you have uh, acquired the parts from so after testing all of these now for the uh, kind of annoying bit sawing them all into these and then putting all of these into here so here it is a uh, fully functional stock sheet with all of my MOSFETs in it. And now that the stock is entered into the system, it can go into storage. There is nothing better than a full set of replete parts trays. And what's even better than a replete parts tray than an entire bag full of capacitors that you got entirely for free? So you can gather all of the parts to your heart's desire. And whether it be uh, components to sell or just bag them up like this and sell them, I guess. Or parts to use in future projects, such as uh, some really beefy inductors or whatnot that you can't exactly buy for cheap. Those things are at least five, ten dollars each. And that's just the core, not with the windings on. And speaking of cores without windings, you can take these transformers and uh, with a bit of effort you can strip them of their windings to make your own transformers. The main advantage here with all these recycled components is the fact that you didn't really spend any money on them so when you put them into something like a, uh, a test, any kind of experimental test or whatnot, it isn't so critical if your test fails or whatnot. You can always uh, use more of the salvage parts. You can also find really common values that you can use as well. Other main advantage of this technique is the fact that you get a whole range of components of different values of capacitors and uh, transistors and whatnot. And that way when you are experimenting you have a variable range of things to work with or test with without having to buy multiple different values or that is particularly helpful when you get expensive power components and things that could get pretty expensive just for an R&D session. So in this case home R&D can proceed quite well with a healthy supply of uh, salvaged parts. So thank you for watching if you've made it this far. It's been a pleasure to share this technique with